Good morning, everyone. It's Jelani. The morning scripture came from 2 Samuel chapter 13. Yeah, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning as every morning, first and foremost, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and first and foremost, to thank you for all that you have done, are doing, and are going to do for us in this life. Heavenly Father, We want to ask that we who are yours shall be accounted yours until the end. Lord, I would want to ask for each and every one of us that we do not become blinded. And when I say blinded, I'm not talking necessarily a natural blindness but a spiritual blindness we do not want to become those who are not aware of the signs of the times and what is happening here in this world yes as you have said in your word when your return is near or nigh people will be marrying and giving it to marriage and celebrating and just going about their normal everyday life the hustle and bustle the rat race of this life until you break open the sky and come to redeem those who are yours and to judge the living and the dead we do not want to be as the five foolish virgins those who were found without oil we want to be ready, prepared, awaiting your return, so that when you do return, we shall be with you and like you. So, Heavenly Father, my prayer and my petition for all of us this morning is that we are watchful. We are watchful and we are abiding in this world but we are not of it but that we are of your heavenly kingdom to come and though we are here we are just abiding as sojourners as pilgrims pilgrims progressing through this life that our kingdom is one yet to come one in the heavenlies and that we are mindful that the world, this world, and all that there is in it will come to an end one day. And there's nothing that no one can do to prevent that because the word of God has gone, gone forth. So let us not slave to try to gain this world. Yes, we can use it to the benefit of you. But let us not slave away to gain it, gain the mammon, or serve ourselves and serve the mammon of this world. Because we know all of that, again, leads unto the little G, God of this world, which is Satan, which we do not want to serve. But instead, we look to serve you, O Heavenly Father, through and by and for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So, as we petition you, we petition you for this also, that you keep us according to your good, acceptable, perfect, and holy will. That you always allow your Holy Spirit to reign in us, to lead us in what we ought to think, say, do, all that proceed, proceeds from us, if inspired and directed of you and acceptable by you and that you continue to use these words that we read each and every day 
we bring it to remembrance and you do give it to us even in dreams in visions in prophecy you you give us your word dear lord as the means of correction instruction in righteousness encouragement reproof all of these things and to think that we have the record from the beginning of time is a wonderful thing because mankind in their own ignorance seek out things that are already plain to know and to see because the evidence of our creation is again that which points back to the creator which is you O heavenly father so we thank you for all things we pray that you continue to help us throughout the tests and trials of life that we again abide in you sturdy strong unwavering that we are able to overcome all things that this life has to throw at us that we continue to be persevered or we continue to persevere and be perfected in your love that we continue bit to be used in the lives of the youth the children to bear that example of christ unto them we continue bit to be used as the example of christ in each and every person's life that we come into contact with in the seasons appointed and that you continue to promote to nurture to sustain and to put your hedge of protection around marriages in the pursuit of godly marriages because we know the enemy is out to destroy this because this is again the, the, the foundation in which all of us come into this world one man one woman no no scientist can debunk that one man one woman is the means by which all of us come into this world and you have ordained it from the beginning to be done in such a way that we glorify you and that is in the sanctity of marriage so i pray that you continue to promote this oh heavenly father keep us from falling in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ yeshua hamashiach we pray amen all right so second samuel chapter 13 and it came to pass after this that absalom the son of david had a fair sister whose name was tamar and amon the son of david loved her and Amnon, Amnon, sorry, Amnon, the son of David, loved her. And Amnon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar. For she was a virgin, and Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. For Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonad, Jonadab, the son of Shimea, David's brother. And Jonadab was a very subtle man. And he said unto him, Why art thou, being the king's son, lean from day to day? Wilt thou not tell me? And Amnon said unto him, I love Tamar, my brother's brother Absalom's sister. And Jonadab said unto him, Lay thee down on thy bed, and make thyself sick. And when thy father cometh to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come and give me meat, and dress the meat in my sight, that I may see it and eat it at her hand. So Amnon lay down and made himself sick. And when the king was come to see him, Amnon said unto the king, I pray thee, let Tamar, my sister, come and make me a couple of cakes in my sight, that I may eat at her hand. Then David sent home to Tamar, saying, Go now to thy brother Amnon's house, and dress him meat. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house, and he was laid down. And she took flour and kneaded it. And made cakes in his sight and did bake the cakes and she took a pan and poured them out before him but he refused it sorry he refused to eat and Amnon said have out all men from me and they went out every man from him 
And Amnon said to Tamar, Bring the meat into the chamber, that I may eat of thine hand. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made and brought them into the chamber to Amnon her brother. And when she had brought them unto him to eat, he took hold, he took hold of her and said unto her, Come, lie with me, my sister. And she answered him, Nay, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not thou this folly. And I, whether shall I cause my shame to go? And as for thee, thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. Now, therefore, I pray thee, speak unto the king, for he will not withhold me from thee. Howbeit he would not hearken unto her voice, but, being stronger than she, forced her and lay with her. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly, so that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love with wherewith he had loved her. And Amnon said unto her, Arise, be gone. And she said unto him, There is no cause, this evil in this evil in sending me away is greater than the other that thou didst unto me. But he would not hearken unto her. Then he called his servant that ministered unto him and said, Put now this woman out from me and bolt the door after her. And she had a garment of diverse colors upon her, for with such robes were the king's daughters that were virgins apparelled. Then this servant brought her out and bolted the door after her. And Tamar put ashes on her head and rent her garment of diverse colours that was on her, and laid her hand on her head and went on crying. And Absalom her brother said unto her, Hath Amnon thy brother been with thee? But hold now thy peace, my sister. He is thy brother, regard not this thing. So Tamar remained desolate in her brother Absalom's house. But when King David heard of all these things, he was very wroth. And Absalom spake unto his brother Amnon neither good nor bad, for Absalom hated Amnon, because he had forced his sister Tamar. And it came to pass after two full years that Absalom had sheep shearers in Baal Hazor, which is beside Ephraim. And Absalom invited all the king's sons. And Absalom came to the king and said, Behold, now thy servant hath sheep shearers. Let the king, I beseech thee, and his servants go with thy servant. And the king said to Absalom, Nay, my son, let us not all go, now go, lest we be chargeable unto thee. And he pressed him, howbeit he would not go, but blessed him. Then said Absalom, If not, I pray thee, let my brother Amnon go with us. And the king said unto him, Why should he go with thee? But Absalom pressed him that he let Amnon and all the king's sons go with him. Now Absalom had commanded his servants, saying, Mark ye now when Amnon's heart is merry with wine, and when I say unto you, Smite Amnon, then kill him. Fear not, have I not commanded you? Be courageous and be valiant. And the servants of Absalom did not, sorry, and the servants of Absalom did unto Amnon as Absalom had commanded. Then all the king's sons arose, and every man got him up upon his mule and fled. And it came to pass while they were in the way that tidings came to David, saying, Absalom hath slain all the king's sons, and there is none there is not one of them left. 
Then the king arose and tear his garments and lay on the earth. And all his servants stood by with their clothes ready. And, Jonad, and Jonadab, the son of Shemiah, David's brother, answered and said, Let not my lord suppose that they, that they have slain all the young men, the king's sons, for Amnon only is dead. For by the appointment of Absalom, this hath been determined from the day that he forced his sister Tamar. Now, therefore, let not my lord the king take the thing to his heart to think that all the king's sons are dead, for Amnon only is dead. But Absalom fled, and the young man that kept the watch lifted up his eyes and looked, and, behold, there came much people by the way of the hillside behind him. And Jonadab said unto the king, Behold, the king's sons come, as thy servant said, so it is. And it came to pass, as soon as he had made an end of speaking, that, behold, the king's sons came, and lifted up their voice, and wept. And the king also and all his servants wept very sore. But Absalom fled, and went to Talmai, the son of Amihud, king of Geshur, and David mourned for his son every day. So Absalom fled and went to Geshur, or Geshur and was there three years. And the soul of King David longed to go forth unto Absalom, for he was comforted concerning Amnon, seeing he was dead. Amen. All right, we'll leave it at that this morning. Um, tomorrow, tomorrow is Saturday, isn't it? Tomorrow we go in depth with the chapters of this week. Um, anything that you want to share before then, you can drop it in the comment section or send it into the word at reachreach1.org. And as much as the Lord has led me, taught me, and kept me over the years, I will answer them according to His word according to his principles, according to his will, being led by his Holy Spirit. Have a blessed day, everyone, and God's willing, we'll catch up again tomorrow.